There are new questions about coronavirus immunity after researchers confirmed a man in Nevada was infected with the virus twice. The study was published in the Lancet Infectious Diseases Journal Monday. The 25-year-old patient became infected twice in less than two months after testing negative twice in between. It was the first confirmed reinfection case in the U.S. For more on this, I want to bring in one of the authors of this study, Dr. Mark Pandori. He's a director of the Nevada State Public Health Laboratory at the University of Nevada Reno School of Medicine. Dr. Pandori, thanks very much for joining us. Tell us more about this man's case. We know his second illness was more severe. Can you explain what you and your team found? Well, what we found was that the patient, as you said, was positive in April and was ill, but not so severely ill that they required any hospitalization more like an influenza-like illness. And that specimen, that positive specimen, was here at the Nevada State Public Health Lab because we're the lab that the testing for that region. And then, as you said, tested negative twice in June, or in May, rather, um, in furtherance of going back to work. It was a workplace that required two negative tests. And then another began to feel very ill towards the end of May, and in that case became severely ill and, and ill enough that he had to go to the hospital. And um, the testing that was done also, that specimen came to the Nevada State Public Health Lab. And so what we did was we wondered if, this, if, if there was any genetic distinction in the two viruses because all, it looked like a reinfection case because, as you say, there's recovery and two negative tests in between. But the only way we could prove it was to look at the actual genome structure of the two viruses. So what we did was... Uh, here, being on the Nevada um, University of Nevada Reno campus, we had access to a really good high-end sequencing DNA sequencing facility, and we sequenced and found that there were significant genetic differences in the specimens that we found in both positive cases. And there was so much difference that we had to conclude that these were two separate infection events. All right. Now, doctor, there have been other confirmed cases of reinfection around the globe. How do they compare? Well, there are several other reinfection cases, both in the peer-reviewed published literature and also in what you call the preprint servers. And they really run the gamut. Many of them show the second infection or the second instance being less severe than the first. And one might expect that because you'd think your immune system can do something to prevent infection and to maybe dull the second infection. But in fact, in a couple of instances, ours and at least another one, the subsequent infection was quite severe. And so, um, like a lot of biological phenomenon, it seems to run a very wide gamut. So I just want to give our viewers some context here, because obviously there's a lot we still don't know at this point. But how rare is coronavirus reinfection? The problem is we don't know. I think a good educated guess is that it's rare. But if the second infection is less severe than the first or even asymptomatic, then that means many reinfections would be what you might call under the radar. For the cases where there is evidence of reinfection and the second case is symptomatic, those these are very hard cases to ascertain. You have to do a lot of work. You have to have the specimens to begin with. And then you've got to have negative intervening testing. And then you've got to do a pretty high level amount of sequencing and what they call bioinformatics science in order to really understand what you're looking at at both ends. So I would hypothesize that it's rare, but on the other hand, given how difficult it is to ascertain these, and given the fact that many of them may be asymptomatic, I think it's only fair to say from a scientific perspective that we actually don't know how often this happens. Yeah, it's important for people to have that information as they kind of hear about the reinfection case. Um, so President Trump has claimed that he was immune after being diagnosed and treated for COVID-19. Dr. Pandori, what do we actually know about coronavirus immunity? Well, we don't know very much, and that's why this seems to be such an important piece to a puzzle. Um, I think we get caught up in thinking that 
we should have all the answers to the biology of this virus immediately. But we forget we're not even a year into this, you know, maybe nine to 10 months of good research so far. So we don't know, we just don't know, given the pace of science, that much about the immunology associated with SARS-CoV-2. But your question was interestingly worded because you said, what do we know about immunology with respect to coronavirus? And when we look at that, we actually have learned some things about coronaviral immunity from other coronaviruses that cause seasonal colds and the first SARS-CoV virus. And so what we've learned in those cases is that at least it seems that sometimes immunity to coronaviruses doesn't last as that long, that in the, the wide biological spectrum, at least for some patients, to SARS-CoV-1, for example, immunity didn't last as long as we might have hoped. So this is just one study investigating one case of reinfection in the U.S. More research is needed. What are the next steps or what questions do you still have about COVID-19 reinfection and immunity? Well, I think what's going to happen now that enough time has passed from the pandemic and labs are able to keep their head above water with regard to testing, I think we'll start to see more reinfection cases, and that will actually be important for the science of this and understanding it better, because the next step is to look for commonalities in these cases. You know, is this something more related to the virus that's causing reinfection, or is it something about our own immune systems that facilitates reinfection? Or maybe we'll find out that reinfection is so extremely rare that we're talking about, um, you know, an event that's just incredibly rare in this case. or. Um, so the next step is to try to culminate all the data about reinfection cases and see what are some of the commonalities that we see between them. All right, people just have so many questions right now. Dr. Mark Pandori, thank you for helping us sort through what we do know at this point. Really appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you.